Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. As we conclude our alternate win condition week on the channel, let me know in the comments if this is something you would like to see again in the future, maybe with other themes and topics, and then we can make that happen. For now, I've saved the jankiest alternate win condition for last, and that is a Darksteel Reactor. A 4-mana indestructible artifact says at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a charge counter on Darksteel Reactor. When it has 20 or more charge counters on it, you win the game. So this is probably the hardest alternate win condition to pull off on Arena, not only because it takes a long time to get to 20 counters, but also because the opponent's most likely going to concede the game before you get to that point. So to try and speed up the process, I'm playing a Reactor in a Proliferate deck, that way we can quickly get up to 20 counters and hopefully our opponents will stick around for that to happen. Another way to win the game with Reactor is to essentially take infinite turns, which we're going to try and achieve using Manchester Scepter. So this is a true build around card in the deck. A 3 mana artifact, pay 4 mana, tap it, put a charge counter on Scepter, and then tap, remove 3 charge counters from it to take an extra turn after this one. So the goal of the deck is to play Scepter, put a counter on it as soon as possible using our early acceleration. We've got 8 1 mana elves, as well as 4 copies of Explore and 2 copies of Gross Parrel. That way we can maybe play a turn 2 Scepter, turn 3 already put a counter on it, and then turn 4 the plan is to start proliferating onto the scepter after getting that first counter, that way we don't need to pay 4 mana again to put a counter on it, instead we can just keep proliferating and then hopefully get to 4 counters total on scepter to take an extra turn, still have a counter left over, so we can once again keep proliferating and hopefully keep taking extra turns. And then to help with that plan, we also have one copy of Scepter in the sideboard. So we essentially have seven copies in the main deck, since Karn's minus two ability can not only find our win condition, a Dark Seal Reactor, but it can also find the extra Manchester Scepter. And then of course Karn offers a ton of extra utility, maybe shutting down opposing artifacts in the process. So then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we've got a few ways to proliferate, starting at two mana with Experimental Augury. A two mana instant can take a look at the top three cards of our library, put one of those into our hand, the rest on the bottom, and then we get to proliferate. Then at 3 mana we've got the full set of Evolution Sage, a 3-2 creature, and a landfall says whenever land enters the battlefield under our control we get to proliferate, especially nice with our Fabled Passage, which can enable a landfall twice for us. And then at 4 mana, which is actually more like 3 mana, since we're often going to pay 3 mana and 2 life to cast Desert's Gambit, we get to draw 2 cards and then proliferate. We also have 1 copy of Tekuthal, which will double up our proliferates. And then at 5 mana, 2 copies of Inexorable Tide, a 5 mana enchantment, saying whenever we cast a spell, proliferate. So if we have both Tide in play and Evolution Sage, whatever we draw, either a land or a non-land, will help us proliferate going forward. And that's how we guarantee that we can take infinite turns with Magister's Scepter. Then we've got a few more fun-offs in the sideboard to maybe fetch with Karn's minus two ability. Of course, by proliferating, we also increase Karn's loyalty, so it's trivial to use a minus two turn after turn. And the sideboard includes Tormod Script and the Gravedigger's Cage as graveyard hate for some of the faster combo decks in the format. We've got Icar Moon Gauntlet, which says whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we can put an extra counter on a permanent we control that's already there, so that can put extra counters on the Scepter or extra loyalty on Karn. And then we can also potentially use Karn to proliferate each turn, using its zero ability now, and then a minus 12 to take an extra turn after this one, so that can also complement our Magistrate's Scepter nicely. Then we of course have our fourth scepter in the sideboard. Transplant Theorist is here to avoid decking, because there may be scenarios where it's going to take a while to win with the Darkseal Reactor. You may not be able to attack with your creatures, so you have to win with Reactor, but you may run out of cards in library in the meantime while taking infinite turns, and the Theorist can just activate to put cards from your graveyard back on the bottom of your library, so you can keep looping those over and over again. And then a Contagion Dispenser is also a fun one. When it enters, we get to proliferate. And then whenever we proliferate for the first time each turn, we can draft a card from its spellbook. And all the spellbook cards include cards that can also help us proliferate to keep the engine going. And there's some fun cards here that you cannot really play anywhere else on Arena. So you need to get them through the Dispenser spellbook. And of course, there's a lot of cards we could also include in the main deck, like Flux Channeler, which I definitely considered. And another Tide, of course, can also be fun to grab. Got the Skydiver. Fallen Bright Druid can proliferate, a Rolask when creatures die, Sword of Truth and Justice, also only available through the spellbook. Then a Thrumming Bird can also be fun while taking infinite turns if the opponent doesn't have any flying blockers out. Smell Fear as removal, 
good Canker Bloom can also take out artifacts or enchantments, and then Tezzeret's Gambit, which is also in the main deck, and then of course for Dark Steel Reactor, then a mana base, besides four copies of Fabled Passage to grab basics to enable Landfall twice, also includes two copies of Karn's Bastion, which can also activate to proliferate, which can also make the difference, and then a lot of blue-green dual lands, including lots of untapped green on turn one to play our turn one elves, and then a couple basics, of course, to fetch with Fabled Passage, Soaring City and Buseju for added interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is missing untapped green mana for elves. Can I still keep? I guess we do have a turn to explore, so maybe it's still feasible. And then ideally find an untapped green source so I can explore into an elves. The rest can take away our scepter, or more likely to go for Karn. Alright, so I can explore, and then hope to draw a green source. So no elves here. Can still play scepter next turn. Found a backup Karn. Could also go elves plus augury to keep hitting our land drops. That may be better. At least we're not up against a super aggressive deck here, so we may have time to set up our scepter. Cut down kills elves, to be expected. And a fugue is gonna take away Karn again. Alright, time for scepter and mystic, and then could play a tide next turn. Skull Raid gets the Tide. Alright, so now we're a bit light on ways to proliferate, although Bastion helps. So we'll hit for one, put counter on Scepter. And then now we're just waiting for ways to proliferate, pretty much. Ooh, a Westgate Regent, that can end the game in a hurry. So not what we wanted to see to top off the opponent's curve. Augury is a good draw. So I don't want to tap Bastion. Found a Karn, Tide, and Sage. Hmm, so Tide I wouldn't be able to play right now, which is a problem if her opponent has another discard effect. Could go for Sage and play it, or could get Karn. And then let's see, if we plus up to 6, they can still hit it with a Regent. And then I wouldn't be able to... I guess I will still be able to minus 2. So that plays around a discard effect the best. Yeah, maybe that's worth it. Get Karn, and then Karn can potentially get more ways to proliferate out of the sideboard. So we'll just plus. So unless they have Planeswalker removal, this plays around discard the best. Opponent cuts down our Mystic. They may ignore Karn and just go face, but nope. So now the Regent also doesn't pick up any plus one counters. Alright, not gonna mess around. Cash and Karn. And then what do we want to get? Gauntlet's an option, although we lost our Planeswalker. So maybe I prefer the Dispenser here. And then I'm not going to take an extra turn with Scepter yet, since I want to proliferate to get at least four counters on it first. And what do we want to get? Contagion Engine it's kind of slow to get going, but it does proliferate a lot. I guess we'll go big with Engine. And just pass for now. So we're on a clock from a Regent and Hive as well. Pilfer can grab our engine. Engine down. Regent hits for four. So at the very least I can activate Bastion to proliferate next turn. Regent now an 8-8. Eight, eight. 
Okay, Fabled Passage. So, yeah, I think we activate Bastion. Proliferate on the Scepter. Dispenser triggers. And uh, Tesseret's Gambit might be the pick here. Take our extra turn. Not gonna fetch with Passage in case we find Evolution Sage. Another Scepter is gonna take a while to set up. So instead, let's uh, Gambit first. Find another Gambit. Can we get an Evolution Sage? It is one of the options. Thrumming Bird instead. Is it worth it to grab the engine? Let's just grab the Canker Bloom, which is a guaranteed proliferate at least. And then for now I'll Gambit again. I can play Canker Bloom. And then let's see here. This can also trigger during the opponent's turn. So we'll take another hit from Regents. With Hive it's still only 11 damage. Alright, our opponent's gonna grasp right now, in which case I guess we'll proliferate anyway. So we miss out on the dispenser. Alright, opponent gets to take their turn. And then hopefully we get two gambits to keep proliferating, if not there's a bastion. Skull raid, discard two, keep gambits. And take eight. Alright, so it's our last turn here. Gotta make it count. And Sage was excellent. So hopefully they're out of removal now. Can play Sage, play Gambit. Perfect. And find another Evolution Sage. So for now, maybe I don't have to sacrifice all the Fabled Passages quite yet. Just take our extra turn. Play another Evolution Sage, keeping Bastion untapped. What do we get of Dispenser? Sword or Gambit? Let's grab Gambit. Fetch a basic. And I'll just grab the other one here. Alright, so we've got a few extra turns lined up. Proliferate again. And I guess we can just start attacking with Evolution Sage, although I really want to find our Karn to be able to uh, get our Darksteel Reactor. Oh well, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems keepable. Elves into Augury to look for a Scepter. Could also play Evolution Sage on two. Now we're probably going to explore. Well, let's see what we're up against. Naya Colors and a Priest. Alright. Just Vigilance, Flying and Haste. Could be worse. So for now, want to keep on ramping with Explorer. And then I can explore again, play Fabled Passage. Or Yuffie Maya Coast is fine. Okay, so just missing Scepter. If we can find Scepter 
and then activate it. The Tide and Sage should help us proliferate. Scale up. Okay, that's gonna hit for six. So I should maybe start with Augury. There's Scepter, perfect. Play Scepter and Passage. Pass it back. Not gonna sacrifice Passage yet until we need to, since it may be an extra landfall trigger for Sage. Take two. Looks like there's another pump spell incoming. Giant growth, okay. We're at seven. I'm gonna need to survive another turn or two. So if I activate Scepter, I can play Sage. Although I may be better off just holding both Sage and the land. Since if I play Sage, I give up all my landfall triggers, whereas next turn I can play Sage, enable landfall twice. I may also need to uh, hit another land of Gross Peril, but we'll see. So hopefully we can survive here and string together a few extra turns. Just hit for two. Get to untap. Alright, so play Sage. Play Cascade. Spiral in Breeding Pool. And then I'll keep the Mystic to proliferate with Tide. So we bought ourselves an extra turn, and we still have a counter left on Scepter, which is pretty important. So we'll take our extra turn. Augury's great too. So play Tide. Play Mystic. Play Augury. I guess we can augury first. So we proliferate twice. And another evolution sage versus fabled passage. Could also go for bastion actually. Which will help me proliferate in future turns. Okay. So we're up to five counters. Activating Bastion gives us another extra turn, and if we draw a spell or a land, we'll be able to proliferate again as well. There's a land. So proliferate, play a land. Yeah, our extra turns are starting to run pretty low, so we'll need to find some card draw here. Don't have any great attacks, don't want to trade Evolution Sage. And just a land. So I can take an extra turn, but then I won't have any counters left on Scepter, which means I won't be able to string together more extra turns. I guess we play a land, proliferate on Scepter. Alright, so I guess we'll uh, still go for it here. Just to Mystic the draw. So counter on Scepter, play Mystic, I can proliferate, but I wouldn't be able to take an extra turn. Since Scepter is tapped. So maybe I should attack with Evolution Sage, not sure if our point is a protection spell that doesn't pump, but just like a time you're safekeeping. We'll find out. Could have been attacking for three this entire time. All right, let's pass it back and hope we're still not dead here. 
So it looks like they might have a pump spell. Yeah, I got close to going infinite, just needed one extra card draw spell to keep the extra turns going. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand seems okay. Missing Scepter, but we've got Elves and Explore for early ramp. Turn 1 Shadow Spear, so some sort of artifact deck. There's Karn to eventually get Scepter. Could also shut down artifacts before they maybe equip the Shadow Spear. Bells, alright, so point is definitely going big here. Can explore, and then probably explore again. Okay. Next turn, play Karn. And then Augury could also proliferate the loyalty on Karn. Kemba equips the belt to itself. Can at least play Karn before they can equip Shadow Spear. Although that assumes the Lunar Elves is chomping, which I guess it may be. Gotta get Scepter, I think. And then I can minus Karn once again. No equipping Shadow Spear, opponent's trying. Opponent does go for Karn. And then Fable Passage is good with Evolution Sage. And Invisible Stalker, alright. So, don't have many turns left. Karn's gonna minus, and do we want to get a Dispenser? Do we want to get Gauntlet? We're not gonna get a chance to really activate anymore. I guess I can put one extra counter on Karn, but that's about it. So, yeah, Dispenser seems like our best bet here. Play Scepter, play Sage, and then next turn we can put counter on Scepter, and... Uh, proliferate a bunch. May or may not be good enough. I assume our opponent's still killing Karn here. So that may buy us an extra turn. If they don't kill Karn, then I can still maybe get an extra spell. Right, Stalker goes face. Karn down. So now they can equip Shadow Spear again. Outfitter maybe targeting a hammer that they have in hand or goes for Shadow Spear, which they can equip right now. Four three thanks to Kemba giving plus one plus one. And a Sigardo's aid. There's Augury, okay. So step one counter on Scepter. Proliferates up to two. Fetch up to three. Augury up to four. And another card seems good. Although our scepter will of course be tapped, so I can't actually take the extra turn yet. So we'll have to survive another turn cycle, which is not a guarantee here. Ooh, opponent's got another belt. Is that lethal? I guess we can jump and then still go to two here to survive. All right. Feels like maybe putting that on Ornithopter could have won them the game, but I'm not going to complain. So now we get to untap. We've got four counters, so are ready to take an extra turn. But first things first, let's play our Dispenser and hope to get another Evolution Sage. Found a Thrumming Bird instead, which I can still play 
I uh, can't quite see the battlefield. Their opponent did not keep Ornithopter back, I don't think. So yeah, grab a Thrumming Bird. And our opponent concedes. Yeah, what's going to happen here? We can play a Thrumming Bird, remove three counters from Scepter to take an extra turn. And then we already have five counters, so it only takes one more to take another extra turn. Now Thrumming Bird adds one each turn. We get to enable the Dispenser for free, basically. And then between Karn and Gambit, we can keep the cards flowing, proliferate some more, eventually find another Evolution Sage, which is going to take over from there. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Hand has potential. Elf, turn two Scepter. Turn three, activate, and then hopefully proliferate. I guess we will need another untapped land since Passage is tapped at the moment. Opponent playing a bush. And a minion. Alright, so we could just be dead here. Well, let's find out. Opponent kept their opening hand, so they likely have two pump spells. A reckless charge. And Reckless Charge. And what's it gonna be? Terror. Yep, that's game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand seems keepable. Got the Explorer into Scepter. And then uh, Evolution Sage to start proliferating. Karn's good too. Up against a colorless, maybe eggs combo deck, or could be ramp instead. So Karn should be quite effective. So I might play that on turn three. Our opponent's deck relies on winning with Aetherflux Reservoir, which Karn also shuts down. So they may not have an easy time winning with Karn in play. Alright, so our hand is shaping up nicely. Especially if we can keep hitting our land drops. Yeah, Anvil pitching an artifact so they can play them for potentially free. Just gonna play Karn, and our opponent may already concede to this. But uh, we can get maybe an Ikramoon Gauntlet to start proliferating. And our opponent has seen enough, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand seems promising. Mystic sets up turn 2 Scepter, turn 3 Activate. And then Tide can start proliferating. So it's going to take us a while to get infinite turns going, but uh, at least we're off to a decent start. Opponent's got Lurus as companion, also doesn't bode well. Turn one Sigardas 8, so it's a hammer deck. Okay. We'll do what we can here in the meantime. Scamp, yeah, that plus hammer can kill us in one hit. So, not looking forward to it. For now, can just pass. Opponent puts Lurus in hand, so no hammer at least. And no attack, so opponent's not even interested in trading for Mystic. Okay, do we play Tekuthal? Do we play Tide? I guess Tide first makes more sense. And then hope there's no hammer. And then next turn, Tekathal proliferates once when we cast it, so we're hoping to pick up another cheap spell. Charger's fine. Hit for one, they can kill my elf. But they don't. Alright, play Tekathal. Proliferate on Scepter. And then next turn we should be able to go off. So hope to dodge a hammer for one more turn. No attacks, get to untap. Alright, so now we're in business. Can play elves, proliferate twice on scepter. Play another one. And take our extra turn. Got another extra turn lined up. So hoping to find a spell here. Tekathal can hit for three. Labeled Passage will keep in case we find one of our uh, 
landfall creatures. So counter on Scepter. This one still takes an extra turn. Tank for three. Thank you. Non land card, please. There we go. Perfect. Evolution Sage. Proliferates. Probably should have uh, added a counter to Scepter first. That was a misstep. Missed out on quite a few juicy counters. But yeah, can uh, put more counters on the other Scepter, play a land, proliferate a bunch of times, and that's pretty much guaranteed infinite turns going forward since a land lets us proliferate with Sage and a non land will trigger the Tide as well. And then it's just a matter of time until we find Karn, and then Karn can use the Wishboard to get our Darkseal Reactor as a win condition in case we weren't killing the opponent with Tekathal. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got a decent hand. Mystic turn to Scepter. And I've got a feeling our opponent's not gonna leave early at least. Bonus mono green. And a treetop warden. Okay. Let's run out Scepter, and then next turn put a counter on it. Turn after maybe Evolution Sage with Fabled Passage. Alright, so stick to the plan. Pass, and then plan to put a counter on Scepter. Hope there's no naturalize effect to destroy it. Carry it, it's fine. Take two. Okay, so do we Evolution Sage plus Passage, or do we play Tide first? We may have time to deploy Tide first, which may have a little bit more upside. And then next turn we can Sage and still maybe play something else. Take three. We're at ten. And an Explorer's perfect. So play Sage. And then we can... Put a counter on Scepter. I don't think our opponent's getting another turn. Put in Fabled Passage. Lay a for a turn. No need to crack Fabled Passage in case we top deck another Evolution Sage, since you can already take an extra turn. Okay, maybe play Karn to get our... Dark Steel Reactor already. Or we can get a dispenser, which is maybe more fun to get going. My purpose is greater than myself. And we'll have to sacrifice Fabled Passage now. Barnes also picking up extra loyalty. Play Dispenser. Take our extra turn and see what we get here. How about a Flux Channeler? Could attack for three, but let's win with Dark Seal Reactor. Play Channeler. Trigger Dispenser. What do we get? Tesseract's Gambit. And then can maybe leave the uh, Bastion untapped, but most likely gonna spend my mana elsewhere. All right, I'm gonna get one final card before getting Dark Seal Reactor. Let's get the Icar Moon Gauntlet, which we otherwise never get to see in action. I will rid you of your corruption. Probably should have started there to get a few more counters first. All right, so I think we've got infinite turns locked up here. Next turn we'll get Darksteel Reactor, 
and then it's not going to take very long to uh, add 20 counters to it. If we're ever in danger of decking, we can also get our other sideboard card to shuffle cards back on the bottom of our library. Dispenser gets another Gambit. Want to try and get a counter on it as soon as possible. And we can Gambit once again. Okay. Untap. First counter on reactor. And then now we can also proliferate using Karn and the Acre Moon Gauntlet. Can take an extra turn with a minus 12. Got a few options. Step one should be to put a charge counter on Scepter before we proliferate. And yeah, let's keep the ball rolling. Got two different arts of Gambit since the ones from Dispenser are the original, whereas we only have the Mystical Archive really to choose from. Can maybe try the Clasp. Take out a Carrotid. Then four mana to proliferate, or we can draw. So I guess we could add more counters to the reactor as well with the gauntlet if we'd like. It's already up to eight counters. Make that nine. Take another extra turn, so we've got two in the chamber here. Still 36 cards remaining. So yeah, I don't think we're going to risk decking, but just in case we would, then the trick is to minus two Karn, get the Theorist, and then we can use the Theorist for two mana to put a card back in our library, and then we can keep cycling through the deck infinitely. And uh, how about another Evolution Sage? Reactor up to 11 counters. Play another elf. And then we can take a few more extra turns. Up to 17 counters already. Another Evolution Sage. Karn can take an extra turn. And this should pretty much do it. Dispenser. Get one last card. Another Sage. Okay. Well, this was fun. Finally getting to see the deck in action without our opponent conceding. And Reactor wins the game. Alright, so we get to see our Darksteel Reactor deck in action. And as you can tell from the games today, not a deck I would ever recommend if you're planning to win games of Magic. Especially not in Historic, when even in the play queue you get matched against decks that can kill you on turn 2. So the format has uh, become a little bit too fast to do janky things, including alternate win conditions like Darksteel Reactor. But if you just want to sit down and relax after a long day and maybe play this Rube Goldberg type deck against Sparky, then this may be the deck for you. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.